Welcome to another video from MBBS Wali Didi. We're really happy to see you again. If you haven't already, please hit our subscribe button and support us so that we can continue to make more videos that are relevant to MBBS students and how to study. So please do that. And while you're doing that, let's start off with the intro for pathology. Hello everyone. Before we jump into the video, there's something that I want to tell you guys. We have an Instagram page with the same name. The link is given below. You can go and check the notes there. These are the notes that we took during our previous times. And recently we have posted about ectopic pregnancy. Kindly check that. Today we are going to discuss something that is really important for formation of your concepts and it is pathology. Come on, pathology is very interesting and it is a bit tricky so you need to work on it to get used to it. Pathology is divided into three parts, general pathology, hematology and systemic pathology. General and systemic are related but hematology is an entirely different component. And now, coming to the resources, Robbins and Harshmohan are the two books that are used widely by all the students. Robbins is one of the best books you can ever have. It is one of the best books you can ever read in your lifetime. Trust me, it is the most beautiful book. The Robbins cannot be used completely throughout the year. Not everyone can write the exams with Robbins. So we are using Harshmohan in addition for the exam purpose. The diagrams in Harshmohan are really good and some parts are easier in Harshmohan. If you are starting second year, one of the best favors you can do for yourself is to read Robbins from day one. Even if you are in into the second year, after three months, you can still read it and you can always read Robbins. Harshmohan is just a useful tool for your exams. For any topic from now on, what I would suggest you is start reading with the clinical features. First know how a patient presents to you because you are going to be a doctor who is going to treat the patient and the disease. You are not going to be body centric or the disease centric, you are going to be patient centric. So you need to know how the patient comes to you, what problems he tells you. It is very important to identify the cause, then you can treat it. So first start with clinical features and then go retrospectively into the pathogenesis and then etiology and then come back to the treatment. This is what I use to read whether it is pathology or your medical subjects in final year that is the clinical subjects. General pathology basically discusses about the disease process that is how a disease develops whereas systemic pathology is an application of it into various systems. So general pathology is most important and it would be great if you could read all topics of general pathology from Robin. It is the basis, it is the foundation. Please read general pathology slowly and understand every part of it properly before jumping into the systems. The most important topics from general pathology would be the cell, inflammation, neoplasia, amyloidosis and also hemodynamics. And then you can slowly go into the systems one by one. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna jump right into my general pathology notes which really came through because that's the only thing I revised before my general pathology exam at any given point. Hey guys, so these are my general pathology notes and just as a reference for how you should be taking these notes, hopefully this will give you an idea as to how you can approach your own uh, methodology for taking notes. So first things first, um, I took my notes on, hold up, yeah, I took my notes first on cell injury and cell depth uh, and uh, adaptations and I honestly never looked at anything else ever again because look at these flowcharts. I can just write all of these again. If you give me some time, I can revise these because they're meant for me. And I think that 
it made it like really easy especially the way robins explained everything i thought it was really easy for me to revise everything so i made notes on first the whole cell pathology chapter and then afterwards um oh yeah here's apoptosis this is an extremely important topic which was beautifully explained in robins so like i said i never ended up looking at anything else i just looked at my notes and i was good to go and then oh all these cell changes uh, or, or like i talked about already um and inflammation was another chapter i made notes on which i love so one chapter that i could take notes on any number of times and keep embellishing my notes for my understanding of the topic because it's such an important topic um a table comparing transudate and exudate and processes flow charts everything that i needed um any additions i needed to make i would make and Yeah, these are my notes for inflammation. I also made notes for neoplasia. I might have to look for them. These are my neoplasia notes where I wrote the definitions of everything and I also went into the characteristic features which I never ended up referencing ever again in any other book because this was sufficient for me. And all the important topics like what carcinogens are what viruses can cause cancers i think till date all of these topics come back again and again because they're so essential so in general if there's anything in the neoplasia chapter especially in robins it it would do you good to know everything about it hematology a component of pathology which is very important and yet does not follow the same rules as i would say general pathology and systemic pathology do they have their own thing going on but hematology it has more things going on that are specific only to hematology so if you study hematology properly you won't really be covering systemic and general but it's a very important topic first things first for hematology read harsh mohan i cannot emphasize it enough if you read hematology from harsh mohan you will have clarity and you will understand what you are reading next divide hematology into the three segments it has which are rbcs wbcs and platelets i would say finish platelets first because if you do so you will have finished a limited number of questions in depth which is needed for platelets i think there's only 5 to 6 uh, topics that you need to know from platelets so finish that first and then for red blood cells this is kind of complicated because you kind of need to finish multiple types of red blood cell conditions in retrospect if i had uh, watched pathoma videos in second year i would have had an easier time with red blood cells but i didn't really have a really hard time with red blood cells i just wish that i'd watched it so i would have had an even better understanding but you don't like necessarily need it it's optional red blood cells you will have conditions about the bc membrane defects then you will have conditions about hemoglobin which you've kind of been exposed to in biochemistry because you do need to know hemoglobin metabolism and so forth inherent conditions about hemoglobin that you kind of need to know like thalassemias or sickle cell disease and then you can jump right into anemias like usual anemias do get a little confusing it's not so confusing i think it's more that uh, the number of conditions and the things differentiating between them that gets a little overwhelming divide up your anemias into microcytic normocytic and macrocytic and go from there make sure you know why microcytic happens why macrocytic happens like let me warn you though anemias can be an essay classification of anemias can be an essay followed by asking you to write about uh, iron deficiency anemia in depth or uh, megaloblastic anemia in depth so whatever it is you select make sure you understand which category of anemia it falls into 
the pathogenic basis of it, clinical features, and how to diagnose, which is really important for megaloblastic anemia because there's two components, there's B12 and folate. Lastly, when it comes to WBCs, I cannot emphasize leukemias enough. Yes, you do need to know different types of white blood cells, what their lineage is, lymphoid progenitor cells or myeloid progenitor cells. And you also need to know in which conditions a neutrophil is elevated and a neutrophil is deficient. And so goes for everything else afterwards, basophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, everything so forth. You do need to know where it has a philia and then a penia. And afterwards, you do need to know your leukemias. And I know people get confused between different types. Make tables, make a comparison table between AML and ALL. Just doing that will make your life easier. Same goes for CML and CLL. If you're able to create comparison tables, either based on the genetics that are different or the types, subtypes that are different or the age groups they commonly affect and so forth, you'll never be confused between any of these types of leukemias and you kind of need to know them in detail because each and every one of them can be an essay for your first paper in pathology. Another type of question that you need to be very familiar with is Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's important because there's four types and you kind of need to know the pathology. You have to be able to draw a Reed Stern Sternberg cell. I can never pronounce it properly. How they appear on histology. But that's about it. Uh, I think hematology is one of the easiest parts of pathology if you know how to read it. Most things appear to have things in common but there's a lot of things that are identifying features and I think that's a general tick to pathology as a whole. Learn the identifying features, not the common features. Common features you can always fill in later, but identifying features are what they're looking for when they're reading your answer. So make sure you learn that. Coming to systemic pathology, as I have said earlier, start with clinical features and then read the pathogenesis and then you can go to the other components. In pathology, pathogenesis is most important. I know you need to know about the clinical features, investigations and treatment in few topics, but the key is pathogenesis. You are going to learn how a disease develops into its actual form. You should know about the gross and microscopic features of a pathological organ and the normal organ which you would have done in first year already. If you feel it to be very difficult to continue to read Robbins as you progress on into your second year, you can do one thing. Read the pathogenesis from Robbins. You can read the gross and microscopic appearances and the clinical features from Harshmohan if you are finding it difficult to read the entire topic from Robbins. Also for histopath diagrams, blindly follow Harshmohan. Read the diagrams. You need to read them. You need to understand the diagrams and you should be able to reproduce the diagrams. And one of the important tricks for the exams is if you're finding short of time to write the exam, you can simply draw a diagram and you can just leave it there. A properly labeled diagram would fetch you more marks than one full passage or one full page of answer. Coming to the topics, almost all the topics are important but I would say start with blood vessels, learn the plate formation and all and then go to the heart and then go to your lungs, kidneys one after the other. And most of the topics are important in pathology. You cannot really skip much except for those ENT topics or a little bit of skin. And in pathology, more than the lessons wise, it is the questions that are important. You need to identify the important questions from each topic and make sure you know everything about those. For example, in blood vessels, there are so many questions in blood vessels, but you don't need to know everything. If you know the three or four essays, that is enough. For example, in gastrointestinal system, carcinoma stomach is something that you do not want to miss. In skin, you have to know about squamous cell carcinoma and the list goes on. So first, identify the important questions, make a list, read them and then read the rest of them also. But important ones should not be missed. This is mainly for your exams. If you are really into the subject, you will read everything, almost everything. The basic funda is 
identify the headings pathogenesis etiology clinical features diagnosis and treatment in few and then go headings wise if you can read everything from robins it is great but you also have other important subjects in second year that you need to cover and which are little harder because you need to by heart them like pharmacology and microbiology so general pathology can be read entirely from robins whereas systemic pathology can be a mix of both also try to make notes wherever possible learn the diagrams try to reproduce the diagrams in the exams and one more thing if you cannot watch the pathoma videos try to watch the youtube videos for anything for example the cell inflammation the plaque formation if you do not understand what is exactly happening there are many animated videos in youtube that clearly explain you what exactly is happening inside your body and understanding of these basic concepts is really important you cannot by heart so much here is a quarantine tip for you guys as you all know the lockdown has extended until april 30 so you can start off with your pathology if you haven't already and finish one topic per day yes one topic per day is possible if you read only pathology all day every day and this might sound a bit boring but trust me robins is great harsh mohan is great pathology is great and interesting and you will be finishing most of your portion at a time which will help you in building up of the concepts and understanding all of them together so what you are going to do take a topic write down the important questions it can be from your question bank or previous papers or whatever it is and then start reading those by the end of your um, afternoon or so you'll be finishing the important topics and then you can read the rest of the unimportant according to the exam those topics can be done in the rest of the day and by the end of the day you'll be finishing one topic and if they are really big you can take two days this way you can finish general pathology in about 10 days that sounds great right also if you like the content please like and share with your friends help us reach out other students thank you